Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I think it's recording now. So do you want to introduce this time? We can, we can take turns introducing. <laughs> sure. Okay. On three, we'll go. Hello. Okay. One, <laughs> two, three. Hello. Hello. That was on sync. What does it matter? <laughs> I'm Cameron Archibald. And I am Kieran Khan. And you're listening to the North South uh, Divide podcast. That was the right name. I got that right as well. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for joining us for our second episode. The first episode was quite fun. We, me and Kieran were listening back to it and we hate it because we hate our own voices. It was very amusing. But uh, today we're going to take something a little less serious for topic. We're going to, this time we're going to discuss party political broadcast. So nothing too serious, nothing too in-depth in politics, just a light conversation about what they are, uh, what they are for us and from a SNP perspective and Kieran's Labour perspective, the uh, less inferior, uh, less inferior. I know inferior is when you're worse. That makes no sense. Never mind. Forget, forget, forget what I just said there. Uh, we're just going to jump straight into it. So I'm going to ask you, uh, Kieran, what is a party political broadcast? Well, um, well, how how I would define a party political broadcast is um, it's basically um, is Base, basically like an advertisement for the party so um um so like like during elections and during like local elections but especially general ones um most of the major parties in the uk come out with like with like four or five prog- uh, with like four or five uh, party uh, political broadcasts throughout the whole election campaign and they're basically used to advertise the political party um and most of the time they do advertise certain policies, but then uh, but then some political broadcasts are a, are a little bit more um, lighthearted and and don't don't necessarily go into uh, policies that in depth because uh, because sometimes that's what like leaders debates are for and like interviews are before uh, are for. But yeah, so that's how I guess that's how I would define a party political broadcast. I don't know how you would define it. How would you define I, I, I mean, yeah, I think when I was younger, I used to call them party movie trailers, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially uh, after the independence referendum, there was just, I mean, I don't know how common this is. Maybe I'm just only realizing this now, but after the independence referendum, there was a campaign called Scone for Union that kind of kept going. I mean, they didn't exist in 2014, but they came basically were a continuation of the unionist campaign. Yeah. And they start they started putting kind of pro-unionist uh, advertisements in the cinema. Okay. So me and my dad, we, we were, before COVID-19, we we're quite strong cinema goers. So we would go to the cinema quite a lot to watch a lot of films. Yeah. I'd always keep an eye out for these adverts. I, mean, I think we'll ever spot them twice. I think we booed one point in a theatre, and I think other people started joining in as well. Like for what? This is like the one time I've ever done like hassled a uh, movie theatre for. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. See, I I have never seen a party political broadcast in a theatre. I don't know. I don't know if they're just not broadcasted in um in here in the southeast. But I but I have never seen a party political broadcast in uh in the cinema but but uh, um, but then like for the last couple of years like even like before lockdown and before it was and and when it was safe to go i never really was a big uh was it was a big cinema goer anyway but uh but i used to go a lot when i was younger and like when i was less politically involved but but yeah i don't think i've ever seen a party physical broadcast uh, in the well in the cinema yeah i think i just realized that just from thinking about it scotland union technically aren't a party so oh. I guess you wouldn't get them in the cinema. I think it's campaign adverts you get, and I think the campaigns have to be paid for as well, pretty much. Oh, yeah. um, so I guess, I don't know actually, with off, I know there's a few off-com rules for party political broadcasts, so you can't like smear your opponents, you can't say in a party political podcast, uh, Boris Johnson <laughs> eats babies. Do you want that as your prime minister? You know, or something like that. Or you can't say, did you know that Keir Starmer, like, swims in toxic acid <laughs> just so we can get rid of his boils <laughs> Some shit like that. but I mean yeah so that's one rule the other rule is you can only have a party political broadcast in like three sets of times you can only have it two minutes and 40 seconds 
three minutes and 40 seconds or four minutes and 40 seconds or something around about that kind of time zone. So uh, I think there are there is some leeway to that depending on the part of local broadcast. I'm not sure. But that is your kind of general sort of recommended time to do a part of local broadcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. I um, I know I know the BBC uh, 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 loads of... Uh, uh, um, like loads of broadcasts because like during um, during election time I obviously watch the BBC a lot which is probably not the best idea because the BBC are quite awful but um, but like during like during election times I do watch the BBC a lot and um, and they always um, air them on there I think I think they're free to air on on the BBC I'm not quite sure about that but I, I think I think they are air, um, free to air on the BBC but um, I guess I um, I guess when I was first introduced to um, uh, party political broadcast was in 2005. I think in the 2005 um, uh, uh, general election, the first the first podcast I ever saw was um, was one where David Tennant was in, uh, where where he was supporting the Labour Party, and uh, and I was a really big fan of David Tennant at the time, and 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 yeah, that was the first time I was ever interested. In, introduced by political broadcast and i thought that was quite so david tennant yeah yeah and then he doctor who david tennant yes <laughs> yeah um okay. yeah yeah david tennant um was a huge was a huge labor support um labor supporter he was also in the 2015 broadcast as well with um with uh, i can't remember the guy from the hobbit yeah yes the guy yeah. from the hobbit yeah y- yeah I've seen that one, yeah yeah, the guy who plays um, uh, Sherlock's best friend in Sherlock. I can't remember his yeah. name, but but yeah, um, but yeah, um, that one as well. So yeah, so yeah he's a I'll sort of Labour supporter. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the so, Hobbit cast. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, that was um, that was the first time I was ever introduced to party political broadcast because because I thought I thought it was quite interesting because obviously like. Like, uh, like you don't expect like really famous actors to like take to, like take a political leaning most of the time, and uh, yeah. yes, uh, so yeah, I thought that was hugely. It was Martin. It was Martin Freeman, by the way. Martin yeah, Freeman yes, is yes, the guy yeah, who plays yes. one of the Hobbits in Lord yeah. of the Rings. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess most celebrities do just want to keep their hands away from politics so they can keep most of their fans. Mm. Although what I've noticed is, well, I mean, there's, a, there's either if you're a celebrity, there. <laughs> Is that your brother that just came in? Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep that the podcast. That was so funny. Um, <laughs> so what I noticed in... Uh, <laughs> sorry. What I noticed in, uh, for celebrities is when they, when they jump into politics, either jump straight into the deep end, just like give out their opinions massively. Like Ice T, for example, I remember yeah. like a couple of weeks ago, he was just on a meme rampage sharing tons of political memes like every like five minutes. But then you just get the celebrities that just will see absolutely nothing. They will yeah. just not state a single thing just to keep some sort of credibility. And then you, on the rare occasion, you do get the celebrity who kind of jumps in very briefly, but they will say no more. <laughs> it's always kind of a bit more. I guess it's less risky because you probably get away with one-off comments, basically. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I, re- I remember, I remember in 2016 uh, when, uh, when the far right party Britain first. This was, uh, this was when, um, this was, a, this was when Paul Golding and Jada Franson were at the were at the head of the leadership team. I think, I think Paul Golding is still there, but, um, but I don't think Jada Franson is there anymore. But, um, but they had their, but they had their, um, their, um, their. London um, Mayor 20, 2016 broadcast a band was from the BBC and I think they banned it because because it was deemed too too offensive to the um, to the yeah Islamic community because because of all the things they said about Muslims in the in the broadcast and 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 um, that is the only um, uh, um, a, a case that that I am familiar with with like broadcast actually being banned I uh, or, or maybe I am just kind of ignorant on this topic, but yeah, that is the only case that I'm aware of of like political broadcasts actually being like properly banned from the BBC. I think. Mm. I, I mean, there probably there are probably more, but we're just not really aware of them because usually yeah. when usually off will probably. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the the review works with BBC before they put them on to the uh, you know public TV, but 
I'm guessing they probably review it and then give a thumbs up or thumbs down, basically. Yeah. But to answer one of your first questions before we move on to discussing our personal uh, yeah. favorite or not favorite broadcast, <laughs> uh, you, need, you need to have one six of your party standing in constituencies across the entire country to get a slot for political broadcast. Oh, I'll do. Uh, oh, okay. So any, it's anything below that, you don't get a political broadcast is why parties like uh the democrat like a democratic like it's a democratic party in britain believe it or not but they don't contest more than uh a six of seats so you never see the political party party broadcast and oh, right. the monster raving lady party are the same so you never see them because you just can't get a slot yeah. but i'm sure they have like, i do I do, um, I do have this theory one day that the Monster Raven Looney Party will actually win the majority of seats in Britain with like, with like most of like a protest votes because uh, because because every year or well, every every election, I swear they do better and better. So so I think so I do I do have this theory one day that they might actually win and win an election one day with like all the people uh, protest voting. Kieran, Kieran, no no no, I'm sorry. You you may be pro Monster Raven Looney Party, no, but I no, I'm Lord Bucket. Head, okay, I will always stand by his side, forever loyal to his cause for galactic domination and a new buckethead empire. No, no, so no. you can pick your Ludi rebellion. I'll go for my professional. No, no, no. I am not pro monster raving loony party at all. I mean, I mean, I do think some of their policies are just pretty hilarious. Like I remember, like when they said that um, that they were sent uh, was No Edmonds, the guy from Deal or No Deal, to sort out Brexit. I just couldn't stop laughing at that policy. And they also said that they would get Alex Stewart, who was a former English English wicketkeeper, to to sort out the backstop because because uh, because um, in um, in 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 the British sport. Uh, a backstop is a very popular name for a wicketkeeper. So, 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 sorry, but cricket isn't a sport. <clears throat> Moving on, um, we can we can have that debate later. But. Yeah, well, it's not a sport. Really, honest, but. <laughs> yes, it is a sport. Um, anyway, anyway, so uh, I think I, I want to kick off my. It's not my favorite political broadcast, but it's one of my first main ones I became aware of. Anyway, or ones that one at least I promoted. So in, in the, uh, high school in twenty eleven. When I was in Dundee at the time, uh, I, we were tasked like you were given a political party basically, and you had to like kind of like promote it and like defend it and debate oh, did that you, political party. Did you, did you actually have that as a school as a school topic? Oh yeah, we had modern. It's called modern studies in Scotland. So basically, politics comes under that. And what I essentially did, I had the SNP. That was given to me as my party, which is great because my <laughs> family were massively SNP, so they were pretty. They were pretty helpful with my project oh my of like promoting Alex so Salmon cool. and the SNP so cool. time. I really I mean, wish we had things like that in England. I mean, I mean, I never studied anything political in England uh, at all. Like, I mean, I did do, I did do. A level politics, but I dropped out like before Christmas. <laughs> so, but we won't talk about that. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, another reason why England scores better than England. Really. Um, <laughs> going on. Sorry, I'm, I'm. I'm just for those listening. I'm better from last night because me and Kieran were debating basically <laughs> Scotland versus England, and the day before that too. Uh, we still are. Uh, why? Why still. are our best debates not filmed for this podcast? Like, why? well, we will. We'll get there. But anyway, going back, yeah. going back to the story, right? Yeah. Uh, so one of the first things I did was in this kind of class project for me defending the SNP was to put out the 2011 uh, political party political broadcast, and that one it basically opens up, and you can you can insert in here a clip of it for a second for people to see. But it basically opens up with like all these regular people, like it's an NHS nurse, it's a guy in an office, it's a farmer, it's uh, just a, a school student. They're all doing work, they're all doing the thing, and this music's playing in the background and. It's uh, you pointed this out earlier to me as well before we started, and it was together we stand. <laughs> oh yeah, we fall, which yeah. is funny because it's a pro-independence party that wants to break yeah. up the United Kingdom. But still, yeah. still, um, yeah. But, uh, well, I'll hold hold <laughs> off your comments. I'm not. I need to describe this, right? Okay. So um, uh, so anyway, it, it kind of picks up. You know, they're all just kind of getting along with it, and then they're all slowly start singing to it and then it, get, it gets to a point where it's like come on come on and it goes into like a music solo that we're gonna have our some sort of guitar solo essentially and then alex salmon appears out of nowhere just like sits down and goes the future 
the future is what we make it or something like that and i can't I mean, remember we don't talk about alex salmond anymore but <laughs> yeah obviously he, we can talk about him in a historical sense fine. that's that's fine for this so yeah uh in this section he, i can't remember the middle but he says we're basically like we're really cool we're really sexy you should vote for us again basically mm -hmm. um and then and at the end of it it says he says something like i think the main catchphrase was uh so be part of it. Be part of better. Yeah, yeah. And then, every, and then it goes back to all these people who are working in the, in the NHS, offices, farmers, agriculture, uh, you know, students. And they're all singing now. They're all really getting on to the beat <laughs> for some reason. Um, <laughs> uh, and then it just kind of ends there. It's like, you know, vote SMP. So anyway, it comes to the end. And I turn to my class and like, hell yeah, what do you guys think? It's a pretty sick SMP party political <laughs> broadcast. And they all turn... And then, I'll always remember the first person to speak was my friend Ryan Dix. He turns to me and he goes, cool, but what are their policies? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so my main lesson from that five podcast was, sure, it can be, it can be rocking. It can sound pretty cool. The, the camera angles can be pretty swift. You know, it can, it can be high quality stuff. But, but you have no idea what politics. their policies are. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, I was just I Alex Sabbath coming going, hey, yeah, we're pretty cool. I'm like, Let's do this again. Come on. <laughs> woo. And um, funny enough, though, despite the fact that Party Political Podcast had no policies other than, you know, you know sport independence, um, they, they went on to win a majority in 2011. So, yeah. Yes, the party political process didn't really need to flex that much. Really. Yeah, but, yeah, you know. I am. Um, yeah, yeah, because because obviously SNP broadcasts don't air in England. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they air in England. But uh, so, no, um, so, um, so, so, so. I am not very familiar with the broadcast. So then when you sent me all these ones to check out last night for this podcast, I uh, I was checking them out this morning. Uh, and and then when I first watched that Let's Work Together, I started laughing at the lyrics of the song because it's just so ironic. It's like, it's like a party that is obviously built on built on separating Britain. Whether whether you're pro indie or not, like I don't care either way, but but like but like the party's main objective is to split up Britain, and then the lyrics of the song they choose their broadcast is like "divided we four or something. And and I just started, started laughing for like ten minutes. Like I, I literally used to didn't stop laughing for like ten minutes. It was like <laughs> that's so ironic. Yeah. First of all, separating Britain is a very gory <laughs> phrase, and I would expect that from someone like you. Well. Too. Uh, but we like to say breaking down the British capitalist establishment where I'm from, okay? That's how we justify well, it. Well, I... Uh, Scotland... <laughs> I mean, Scotland is still a capitalist country. Like the... Like the... Like the entire Britain... Um, the entire British state is still a capitalist country. So, um... To, so we can't... So we can't escape... Um, so we can't escape capitalism at the moment unless we overthrow it. Hashtag socialism. But... But, like... <laughs> but, like but like we can't like escape it at the moment. So like whether 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 you like it or not, uh, Scotland is still at this stage and at this point of time is is a capitalist country. But then so is England, and so is the rest of the uh, so is the rest of the UK. Unfortunately, I mean I think from what the SNP were doing that our political broadcast was because at the time uh, the uh, United We Stand and We Fall was quite a powerful phrase to use against the SNP because obviously Unity had a very strong sort of kind of social aspect to the independence debate about yeah. what it actually means to be a United country and you can look to the European Union and say look all you've got all these unions around us we, these unions stand for something greater and about shared sovereignty and shared resources yeah. um, and, and shared experiences so that's what, that was effective at the time uh, and that's why the SNP were trying to reclaim it. They want to try to take the phrase from themselves, essentially, and put it in there. So, were they basically? You know, so, so were they basically trying to make fun of the people who were basically calling calling them like a separatist movement as like a bad, a like demographic term. I wouldn't say it was mocking. I'd say they were just trying to claim, just take the phrase from themselves to say, to build a better Scotland, Scotland needs to unite, and if we don't unite, then we fall. And I think it was trying to like, unite behind as a single country with independence basically oh, that's right, what they were trying right. to right at the time of course um you know the unity aspect really hit them uh, a lot but then brexit happened uh and obviously the SA and the SNP won a very strong majority in 2015 in scotland um and they have a pretty majority in 2016 uh 
all these kind of over time that phrase kind of unity has kind of declined because obviously the SNP are massively popular now. Yeah. And even in 2011 they were popular, but they're still popular now. Uh, and of course Brexit happened, so the idea of unity has less effect now. Yeah. Because actually, what what is the unity aspect behind the whole British establishment? So that's what the SNP was trying to do when it came to that part political broadcast. Uh, and even though it didn't see a single policy <laughs> whatsoever, they still got majority yeah. uh, in the Scottish Parliament. Yeah, but anyway, that's, that's, yeah. the S, that's the SNP one. Uh, uh, but what about your one, though? Okay, you so, so, um, so um, moving on to my favourite um, Labour political forecast of, of the last couple of years. Of course, it's a Corbyn one because, you know, Corbyn Knight fangirl. But, but... Uh, but in 2017, um, they had the they they um, had the political broadcast with um, with um, uh, Lily Allen's. Um, you are not no no not not you are not alone. Cause that was this year. Uh, it was um, somewhere somewhere only we know. And and I remember watching that political broadcast on um, on um, on election day because obviously I was. Uh, I was busy all day knocking on doors and I was scrolling through Twitter, uh, Twitter to keep up with everything as I was campaigning. And I, uh, I, and I saw Jeremy Corbyn tweet that out. And then when I watched that broadcast, it was, it was like so inspiring, like, um, like the kind of place that Britain could be, uh, like they were showing um, like, like basically how, how, um, how Britain could be if we just had a government who cared. And, and although quite, quite like the SNP one, it didn't have a single policy, but obviously that didn't matter to me because I knew the manifesto anyway, but, uh, but for people who obviously don't know the policies, it would have made sense to, to, to have more policies in that political broadcast. But, but then, but then I don't think that was the whole point of the broadcast because, um, because it was just basically showing, all the places in Britain, like like the north and the south, and like all the areas of Britain, and 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 and, um, and how they can be improved, and mm. and basically Jeremy Corbyn like visiting all these different areas, and and that was such an inspiring broadcast, even though it 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 featured no speaking, which is probably the best part of the broadcast. <laughs> it like featured <laughs> it featured no it featured no it was no politician speaking. It was just music, and then. And then Jeremy Corbyn just like visiting all these different places in in Britain, and, and it was just so inspiring. Like it is still probably one. It's still probably one of the most. I, I think. I think. Podcasts. I think you've said it's so inspiring like three times. I think. I think. I think. I'm convinced you're inspired by this. Uh, I think though, what's what I find quite interesting about that one and the SNP one is the SNP one was made to actually go to the public. Yeah. And that was. And there was a genuine flaw with the SNP party political progress in 2011 because obviously if you didn't know much about politics and you saw the advert, you wouldn't know what the SNP was standing for in the next election. Yeah. Um, unless you're somehow aware of public policy in general, which I highly doubt. But for the Labour one, though, that one was more designed for Labour supporters, though. Yeah. It was more designed yeah. for Labour members to kind of, as you say, inspire and um, I'm pushing to go out there and campaign and vote for the Labour Party. Yeah. So, and that one is pretty, and that one's actually quite easy to make, the Labour one as well, because it was a montage of already existing clips or maybe some new clips as well, maybe in it as well, to kind of show again the whole country, whereas the SNP had to get actors and all that to put together. So, yeah. Uh, it, w- it was very cost effective and politically effective for what Labour were doing with that advert because they're only targeting their specific voters. And if it worked on you, Kieran, then it had to work on <laughs> the majority of them as well. Yeah. Seeing yeah, as um, you are inspired, uh, three times older. Yeah, well, um, well, that is the only word I could use for broadcast, like in- inspiring. But I guess the difference between Labour and the SNP is. Is is that the SNP have only become popular over the last decade? Like the Labour Party have been um, have been popular for for like the last century, and 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 obviously 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 the SNP have been in existence for for obviously more than um, for more for over over like hundred years. But then coming from a um, was it coming from a, um, a English perspective who, who has never even stepped foot in Scotland? I, I had never even heard of the SNP before 2014. So, um, so, 
so so I guess they I guess because they weren't as as um as they didn't have the basically public um knowledge that the Labour Party have had so so I guess they've had to work a lot harder with their with their political broadcast yeah and uh, and and what you said about the about the Corbyn one, which I just talked about, that um that it was only made for basically a Labour supporters in mind. I think I think you're right because 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 at the time when you like look at the um when you look at the official Labour Party Twitter account, they didn't tweet it. If you if you um if you look at the official Labour Party YouTube channel, they didn't tweet it. In fact, trying to find it to show it to you last night. It took me ages to find it myself. And I literally had to scroll through Jeremy Corbyn's Twitter to find it. But um, mm. so, so yeah, so yeah. Um, I think you're right with the fact that they they um, they they mainly had Labour supporters in mind when they made that one. I think. Yeah, mm. uh, I mean, I think as well we're kind of touching. On, I think when we kind of began discussion of quite political broadcasts, we kind of suggested that. It was only quite political broadcasts that were would it be on public TV, but obviously we're discussing other ones too as well that were <laughs> yeah. just on social media. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's actually another thing as well. A lot of quite political broadcasts in the last twenty years have shifted from being really TV focused. So I remember, like in ten years ago, uh, the party will tweet out, "Okay, folks, uh, get ready to watch our political broadcast on TV." So everyone will get rallied behind the TV to watch it, and really. It was most of the supporters that were already watching it, and then if you were just happening to watch it at the time, you'd yeah. catch a glimpse of it. And if you didn't mind, you'd watch it. If you hit the SMP, you change the channel. <laughs> but nowadays, there's less focus to really push people to watch it on TV because now all the all this media is, is accessible online, and so you can just share a lot of this online as well. Uh, and it's so, and that's why you could probably create multiple sort of party political broadcasts or videos as well. Yeah, I guess um... so. Yeah, I guess um, I guess social media has made it more easier for political parties to um, to basically spread political broadcasts. Like, um, because obviously I don't watch TV a lot anymore, and and I get most of my information from the internet, which is probably not the best idea sometimes. But um, uh, but yeah, I get most of my political stuff like from the internet, from like political um, social media accounts, and um, and and it's so much easier to to basically share political broadcasts anymore, and. And I think that's, and I think that's made a big impact of like what people actually put in political broadcasts on the, um, now because obviously, obviously the younger generation have so much more access and 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 I do think that political broadcasts have become a lot shorter now to like basically accommodate to like things like Twitter to, um, and um, and Facebook and like YouTube because it is much easier to um, it is it is much easier for people to consume a lot a lot of content if you make them shorter so so yeah. i do th- so yeah i do think they have become shorter now to basically accommodate to the was it in, to the new social media world Go- going on from that actually um because you know talking about kind of shorting content there was an smp advert which i thought well, it was quite smart and quirky what you want to talk about i say advert i mean political broadcasting you know, same thing really but um <laughs> So this one I'm quite proud of. I sent you two of them because basically they just repeated uh, yeah. the same advert. And this yeah, is it's, um, the it, Monty it's, Python sketch. Yeah, is <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. Because there's one with um, with uh, Alex Salmon, and then they repeated it again. But then obviously you had Nicholas Surgeon, who is now the leader of the SNP. So, uh, so is that the one you're talking about? Yep, is that yeah. the one I'm talking? About? <laughs> it's quite funny because. Um, Okay, so anyone who hasn't seen um, Monty Python uh, and Life of Brian, there's a scene in it which basically, I can't remember the characters, I can't remember, I've, I've not seen it in like, oh god, 15 years or something like that, I watched it was really young. Uh, there's a scene in it where basically the characters kind of go, what have the Romans ever done for us? <laughs> And then, of course, they're trying to criticize the Romans, and everyone's like, well, actually, they built the road. <laughs> actually, food supplies. Oh, actually, they did all this stuff. And I was like, Oh yeah, well, wow, it's going a lot for us actually. <laughs> and the SMP obviously took that, and the first advert. Well, I mean, both adverts are uh, they're kind of in a social space. So the two thousand, uh, this is no, this is two thousand. What is this, like two years is actually. I can't remember what year. That may have also been two thousand eleven as well actually. Um, so they had two part of the chorus then, where the SM, where one guy's in a pub and was like, "We're the, the SMP, ever not for us." <laughs> 
in, in 2016, it was Nicola Sturgeon, but it was some really posh guy. Was, what have the SNP ever done for us? Posh guys in like a, a young youth party. Um, <laughs> so anyway, in both scenarios, in the pub scenario, like all the people kind of got to go, oh, they gave us free tuition fees. The guys are like, okay, they gave us free tuition fees. Yeah, what is that? Oh yeah, they also gave us increased uh, uh, free childcare. I was like, okay, they gave us free childcare. What else? Oh yeah, they also removed like the, the toes from the table. Oh, they from the table. What else? Oh yeah, they've, they've also managed to, uh, you know, make classroom sizes a lot smaller. Oh, they classroom size. I left my... And then it continues like that, basically. I'm doing that voice, obviously. Obviously, it's not like that. But... <laughs> And then basically goes on and on, listening out and on until the guys are okay. So they have done free tuition fees, uh, short waiting times in HRS, blah 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 blah. Great housing, blah blah, etc. etc. One thousand new police officers. But what have the SAP ever done for us? <laughs> and then at the end of them, both party leaders come out. So it's Alex Salmon in 2011. One, he's, well, he's already in the public. Goes so there you go. We've met uh, 180 of 190 uh, policy. <laughs> But we could do a lot more on the second term, and then, uh, and then the guy, and then the guy in the pub goes, "Well, he seems to know what you're talking about." And then the other guy goes, "Well, yeah, that's Alex Salmon." <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that like him. And then Alex Salmon just goes huh, and walks away, and that's it. And the other one, and then 2016 one, Nicola comes out. It's really funny. Nicola comes out, but she's <laughs> and like, but she's with all these young people around her, and like, basically like a party in it, and it's just quite like. Oh, Nicola. <laughs> oh, hello. Um, <laughs> and she's like, uh, yeah, this is all the things all we've done. And imagine what we can do in another term. And then as she says that, the posh guy in this one, the iron brew blows up in his face, basically. <laughs> like the spray. Um, and then she just, she just, then the end of it is just her going, <laughs> laughing. And then it just kind of freezes in her face saying, well, <laughs> So So, um, that, okay, so that was I'm just kind of like I'm really fanning fanboying over this one. That was good because it used a good kind of pop culture reference to a, a, a very very famous, very well established comedy film, uh, which everyone pretty much most people love, uh, for, those, for those who've seen it anyway. Um, and then they've turned it into a list basically of all their achievements in government, basically. They did it twice. Uh, and that, that's brilliant because it, it gives you a solid background of what the SNP have done. And it, yeah, they may not have stated what they're going to do because obviously it's just a, their kind of historic record, but it gives you an indication of the kind of the, their base values, their achievements, uh, and maybe indicates to, to a degree where they want to go afterwards. So uh, I do enjoy those ones. I kind of hope they don't do it again, though, because if you do it a third time, you're probably pretty yeah. to talk about that kind of one-trick pony. Twice, that's okay. You've got to say, Max, don't do it again, though. It was funny. Move on. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I'm... Oh, yeah, I guess... <laughs> I guess my thoughts on that is that as a, I I actually think it's actually quite funny because um because obviously there are the SNP have done a lot of positive things for Scotland and uh, but uh, but they are not without criticism oh, as well. Oh, you're gonna get in trouble from your Labour Party. Oh, we already <laughs> we already established in the last podcast that both of us are going to be suspended from <laughs> from our respective parties, like at the end of this first season. But yeah, um, so um, um, see, so, so yeah, I really like how they've um how they have listed all the things that they've done, and and I think. And I think in New Zealand, um, uh, also just in the Arden has kind of picked up on that trend as well because um, because about about two years ago, it was she released a two minute video about all her achievements since since becoming prime minister, and then like all the UK politicians latched onto it <laughs> because uh, because because like Sturgeon did okay. the same thing, and then and then and then obviously Boris did it as well, and and and. And then Jeremy Corbyn did uh, also did the same thing, but uh, but his one obviously because he hasn't been in government yet. His one was like uh, like two things we will do in government while um, while holding while holding the manifesto, and he released that before the election last year, which we do not speak about. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, okay, it's okay. I know it's an emotional <laughs> topic for you, but we'll, we'll, we'll get but there. Yes, but yes. Um, yeah um yeah so uh, so he released that that video before the last election and um and, and yeah so 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 like those like 
it does like a, a broadcast do do work really well with like basically um loads of information but um I, 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 I a short amount of time so it's really easy to absorb i think yeah yeah um I, it's quite funny then because when Nicholas, you're right, Nicholas saw it. Nicholas Sturgeon saw it, and um, she's like, I think I remember watching it. She, I can't, what's her name again? New Zealand Prime Minister? Uh, Jacinda. She's oh, like, okay. Hey, Jacinda, um, <laughs> listen, I saw your thing. I thought it was cool, so I'm going to try it now. Um, but that's quite funny. I think the SB kind of already did that with their older man, with their older party political broadcast. So, yeah. in a sense, they've done it again. The SB just <laughs> love doing it. Actually, slightly off with the party political broadcast topic. At SMP conference, they have these little mini books called the SMP Achievements, and usually they get bigger every year because they just kind of add more and more in. And some of them are legit great achievements. Some of them are just kind of normal continuation things, like um, you know, NHS waiting times down, but they just kind of like change the figure basically every, every time they update the book. Yeah. But basically, though, it's intentionally small. So when you open it, all of a sudden it's like this massive list of things that come out. It's really, really long. Uh, I think that's actually SMP... quite clever. Yeah, that it's, that, it's quite clever. good. Uh, like you can keep you can keep it in the back of your pocket. I mean, that's what they said for us. You just pull it and go, well, ooh, look at this long list. Here you go. So I think the SMB have a, a thing for lists. They have a big thing for just like bragging about their achievements yeah. and doing it in an, a certain order. But... But it wasn't. Yeah. But the one thing I've noticed with the SMP is that they haven't declined in popularity. I mean, I mean, like they first got into government in two thousand and seven when I was. I don't. I think I was eleven years old in two thousand and seven, and and now I'm twenty five now, and they're still there. Like, like, like. Uh, so, like, one thing that I've noticed is that they haven't declined in popularity at all, and like they're still at, they're they're still at the height of their popularity. I mean, like. Was it like the last Labour government? Obviously, in in ninety seven, they got that landslide, which we will probably never see again. But then, but then, like in two thousand and one, yeah, they got a majority, but they lost a bunch of seats. In two thousand and five, after the controversy of the Iraq War, they lost more seats. So, um, so, um, so then they actually had to rely on Scottish seats for the first time in like centuries to form a government. And then in two thousand and ten, obviously, they didn't win. So, like, so. so so like when you go from like 97 to 2010, the, the Labour Party, I mean, partly due to their own fault and their stupid actions, they, they lost a lot of, of, um, of, um, of popularity. But then, but then like when you, when you like look at the SNP from like 2007 all the way to now, obviously, obviously a decline is like inevitable, but like they're still very popular, but they haven't declined in popularity at all. It's like... If you want our secret, <laughs> it's our very charming looks. <laughs> it's the fact that we're, we're Scottish as well, which is <laughs> fantastic. And that's my inner nationalist coming out, jokingly, of course. Um, but yeah, no, um, I think... Well, well, I'll just say this one comment. We'll go back to the party political broadcast thing because there's a funny story behind one of the party political broadcast. Is that I think the SNP's fantastic polling right now, which might change next year, we never know, uh, is largely due to the fact that the opposition to the SNP is incredibly poor. Yeah. So, for example, just the other day, Ruth Davidson, who was a former leader of the Scottish Conservatives, has now come back yes. to lead the Conservative group in Scotland. Yes. And, you know, at the time, when she was leading at the time, I was like, oh, she's cool, she's trendy, she's centre-right, she's going to bring the Conservatives into popularity. And she's, like, young and, and everything. yesterday... Yeah, she's young and she's all, you know, she's also gay as well. So she, yeah. she's, she's relatable to a minority group. Yeah. Um, which, of course, she actually does not actually support the minority group whatsoever due to her party stances and certain issues. You know, oh, kind of certain <laughs> members in it. But anyway, put that aside. Um, we don't talk about that. Absol- yeah. Her performance was absolutely dismal. Um, it was the worst performance I've seen from a party political leader in Scotland in a long time. And that's saying something because there's. The SNP have just had to deal with the SQA fiasco in Scotland, which is happening today again in, in England. Um, so it was an open goal for Ruth Davidson to completely spear tackle the SNP on, and she's still messed it up. So that's just kind of an indication. Now, she's the main opposition leader, so that's a main indication of uh, why the SNP are still doing well, because the opposition is just really crap. But I want to go back to the um, 
quite a proper broadcast. And the 2016 one actually had not a controversy. I think opposition parties had to claim it's a controversy, but <laughs> So in the video I sent you, obviously the posh guy, he's wearing a glassless suit and he's got a bit of a beard. A lot of opposition people claim that the SNP were actually mimicking a certain journalist. <laughs> that journalist, a guy called David Torrance, I do believe, who's now working for the House of Commons Library. But basically he was a very conservative commentator who liked to have a lot of digs at the SNP whenever he could, whatever paper he was on, when he was writing his columns. And people claim the SNP kind of characterised him uh, in this advert to mock him, basically, to have a wee dig back at him. Now, obviously, that's not true, because um, anyone can have a beard, anyone can have a pair of sunglasses, because uh, by that logic, I guess anybody could be David Torrance if they have any two of these features. <laughs> um, but it was really bizarre waking up, and I was like, this is an outrage. They're attacking journalists. It's like neo-fascism in Scotland. <laughs> what next will they attack? Will they attack our glorious queen? Our <laughs> ruling monarch of this great nation? Uh, what will they do next? Yeah. So, you know, it was obviously just a fake outrage over it. But I thought it was quite funny because they were picking two very small features in this one character <laughs> and then going, yes, it must be this very specific journalist who's anti-SA. Of course it's there's no other explanation. Yeah, I but, guess. Yeah. I guess. I. I guess that's what journalists do, don't they? Like, it's like they do nitpick. And I do want to come back on, like, before before I move on to the next broadcast, I want to talk about. I do want to come back to your whole argument on the whole weak opposition in Scotland and uh, and the Labour Party in Scotland are unfortunately not doing very well. And and I think and I think one of the reasons why they're not doing very well is because. I don't think that they've um, they they have engaged with the with the with the um, independence question at all because um, because uh, because right now they're just literally like blocking any talk of independence within the Labour Party and 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 I do think that obviously yes they are a unionist party but the problem but. But like, I do feel like politics should be a lot like science, and because because like with science, when you learn new information, that becomes obviously the point of which you do other things. But like with like politics, like like I don't think the Labour Party in Scotland are very good at like taking in new information and then using that to engage with the Scottish people because it's like because because obviously. Obviously, obviously, when uh, when Kezia Dugdale um, um, first became uh, was was the leader, she uh, I think she said in one of her in um, in in was one of her conference speeches that that um, that uh, that any party she leaves would never ever support independence and and yeah, I don't support independence myself, but like that is such. A stupid statement to make. Oh, well, I mean, um, <laughs> let me finish I'm what I was about I'm, to say. I'm nearly convinced you there, but <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish what I'm about to say. So, like, basically, she. Uh, so, basically, right now, the Labour Party in Scotland are alienating a lot, a lot, a lot of um of um left wingers who like their left wing policies because because under Richard Leonard, I do believe the Labour Party. In Scotland has become more left wing, and I supported Richard Leonard's leadership campaign. And I remember at conference the year they were doing that, I actually went to the debate with him and the other guy. What's his name? Sawa or something? But um, I'm yeah, Sawa. Yeah, 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 him. Yeah, yeah. At, um, at, um, at conference seventeen, I think it was. I actually went to the Scottish Labour debate. Uh, um, also with them too, and um, and and I supported also Richard Leonard's campaign and but the problem uh, um, with them is that they're just not even though their policies are actually really good because they have become more progressive they're just not engaging with with the left-wingers who would normally vote for the Labour Party but can't because of their union stance. Even even if they came out and said, okay, we might be neutral on the whole independence side, so we're not saying yes, but we're not saying no either. I think I think that would be a lot better than just just outright saying no because it's they, they're just cutting off a lot of support that they would have from the left-wing Scots, I think. But, yeah. We have taken... In a major turn from power political broadcast to the <laughs> British constitution. <laughs> one, one thing I'll briefly say in this, actually, two very quick things. We'll talk about your 
quite applicable broadcast is. Yeah. As a, there's actually a PhD guy, a guy called Rory Scothorn at Edinburgh University. And he had an interesting idea for Scottish Labour, which was to support Scottish independence, but a very gradual position. In other words, support over 10 years, basically. So slowly develop powers over time. But explicitly state, though, they support independence. And secondly, as well, Gordon Brown's think tank, I can't remember the name just off my head, but they actually sent a report to every single Labour MSP and MP, well, it was only one M- Labour MP, but they sent every Labour politician, major politician in Scotland, about the problems and the positives that Scottish Labour had. And they got a leaked daily record, so if this if this podcast comes out today or tomorrow, <laughs> check out the daily record, because it's got some interesting comments. Do I agree with a few, a lot of it? I do agree with a lot of the criticism towards Scottish Labour. The solutions, though, which Gordon Brown's think proposes is uh, going to be much more debatable. But anyway, uh, that's of what constitutions of masses. <laughs> we will but one anyway. day have a massive debate about that. I mean, uh, I mean, we've it. had course, we've but, had massive but, debates about it privately, and and they have been really good conversation. But obviously, they they haven't been recorded. Okay, right. So moving on to was it to the second broadcast that I want to talk about. Is, is that 2019 broadcast? Um, obviously, um, I do I do have a few issues with their 2019 campaign. Um, is this the Emily Sandy one? Or is yes, the, yes. That one, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah the, um, uh, the, um, the Emily Sandy one, I think that was... Um, first of all, I was surprised that, um, that um, a major pop star would agree to do that because obviously Corbyn is not very liked in the British media. So, um, so, uh, so I was very, I was, I was very surprised that again, uh, obviously because, um, because like, Lily Allen did it in 2017, but then back then the, um, the, um, the, um, hostility to Corbyn wasn't as much because obviously mm. in 2017, no one believed that Corbyn would get anywhere near power. Like, um, like, like even myself, uh, I remember watching, watching the exit polls with my friends in 17 and, and I was just in shock. I was like, Oh my God, we, we almost won, but obviously we didn't, but, but yeah. So, um, so in 2000, in 2019, the like campaign against Corbyn and like the media hostility was even like 10 times worse this time because because obviously of how close he came in 2017 but but uh but basically the party political broadcast was was um was was very similar to 2017 which is probably why i like it but but they used but they used the lyrics of the song you are not alone and 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 they kind of related that to political situations. So basically, um, so like, uh, so like in the first verse, the uh, the lyrics are like, um, are you, are you were tired of like working, of like working for the minimum or, or something? That I think like that was one of the lyrics of the song. And then, and then like when that lyric was obviously appeared in the song, on the broadcast, they basically showed a lot of McDonald workers striking. So so basically what they did was they related the lyrics of the song to political situations. And I thought that was and uh, and the fact that the song wasn't even written for the Labour Party, uh, Emily Sand they just gave permission for it to be used. I thought I thought it was very clever that they related the lyrics of the song to political situations when when the song wasn't specifically written for the broadcast and yeah. So yeah yeah so yeah i thought i thought that was very clever and and yeah and and yeah and that was um i remember when i when i first saw that on polling day again uh i thought that was pretty cool and i think for me when i was watching it i think it kind of gave me a weird it kind of gave me like 2011 vibes the smp political podcast because they don't explicitly state uh, policies but they do visually show them, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. So you saw yeah. people holding stuff like protector NHS. Yeah. Um. Uh. I can't. I can't remember. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember other ones. But I do rec- I do remember recognizing a lot of uh, the vi- the party visuals they were using uh, to promote policy. So yeah. I thought that was actually a kind of smart way of doing it. Obviously, it wasn't explicitly stating who we are and what we're going to do. But it was a bit more casual, and I think I did. I did dig it. I did. I did think it was. It was because it was a good balance of showing what the kind of ma- the kind of light part of the manifesto, manifesto is, and kind of generally what the party are going for, in line with very good visuals, kind of showing normal people doing their normal day work. If it was an ambulance driver, or if it was again a worker in the office, or if it was just kids enjoying themselves. Yeah. Uh, 
and also as well the diversity in it as well i noticed that the diversity was very good in the advert and along alongside that a great singer with a really good song as well so i'd say that's definitely one of the better part of local broadcast because its balance is very good um, yeah and, and again it's also what i think quite interesting is it doesn't necessarily have to be aimed at Labour members or the public. Hmm. It can be applied to both. I do think it leans more towards Labour members because obviously it's, it's quite a kind of an inspiration, as you'd say, uh, to them to go out there and vote. And I think that's really, really important. But I think as well, if the general public were watching that, they could probably get an, they can probably get a light idea of what the party's standing for yeah. whilst themselves maybe being quite attached to that advert. Yeah, and uh, and we, and I think that political parties need to be better at understanding that that the general public generally do not read manifestos. Like I think I've because uh, because I I have like a million copies of the 2017 manifesto around my house, and the book is about that thick, right? Of the book is about uh, the book is so thick, and um, for those and, listening, it's like. <laughs> really thick uh, oh, yes. I don't know how to describe it uh, it's oh. like if you separated your thumb and your pointy finger it would be uh, I don't know uh, it depends on your size of hand and let's just say it's quite a thick boot yeah, y- yeah so basically- I, I remember I remember Kieran showing it to me and I was like wow that's actually quite thick we just yeah. didn't have magazines for our Mac festival yeah. launches it was like it looked like a mini book basically yeah. uh, a mini book you would buy from like yeah, so, a uh, train station yeah so um so yeah obviously obviously i read the manifesto and and you know i do have my problems with it but um but it was the best manifesto labor had probably since i've been alive but the problem is that the majority of the general public will not read the manifesto so they have to find other creative ways of relaying to people their policies and 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 I do think interviews are the main way people find out about political parties and like and and broadcast as well. So so um, so coming back to your point about how clever it was that like, that you could like visualise the policies that Labour would do even like without them mentioning it. I think I, I think that was such a good way of like getting across policies when like when the majority of people will not read the manifesto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, can we, can we also talk about the other 2019, was it, was it 2019 that one? The, the Jeremy Corbyn speech one, basically. Uh, where, he, yeah. uh, where, where did that take place? Do you know where that takes place, uh, by uh, chance? That was, that was a 2017 campaign launch. Right. Uh, let me... Um, so, I, I remember watching it, and I thought to myself, is that like the, the Leeds uh, city centre, uh, or like shopping mall? Because I remember... Exactly. Obviously, my family lived there, and I go there quite a lot. And when I saw, it, I immediately was like, "Oh, that's that's where, that's where I live! Oh my god!" I ah. So I, I really, I got quite a nice little surprise. So I don't even know. I don't. That might be wrong though. It might not even yeah, be yeah. the Leeds. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm center, not. But. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure where it was. It was um, actually set because obviously I wasn't there. But um, uh, but yeah, that um, that was. That was just a speech that uh, that they that they edited together. Uh, so basically, because because the entire speech was, I think it was like 20, 30 minutes of like them introducing everything. But the fact that they could they could they could condense like 30, 40 minute speech about what Labour were going to do into like a two minute kind of advertisement with like basically all the key points of the speech and like summarise it with like very intense, inspiring music as well. I thought I don't again. Okay. I, Again, I don't think that was an official broadcast, but I, but yeah. I am going to slightly criticise the music there. Okay, go ahead. It's not, it's not bad though. Okay, so, um, to kind of more generally just describe what happen, happens in the, math and the party political broadcast, basically. Jeremy Corbyn's on a podium. Obviously, as you pointed out, they've cut down his, his speech to different sections, but they flow quite well, so it's as if he's kind of like giving a sort of very quick kind of speech almost. Um, and it summarizes very much his values there. Um, and as he's talking, it kind of cuts to the crowd about people reacting like smiling or, it cuts at one point to like the windows of the shopping center and you see people leaning in to see Jeremy Corbyn. So it's obviously, it's quite good in the sense it's trying to like show like the excitement and popularity popularity of people want to see him on the election launch and also it's like because it's a mall 
there's like other floors, like open area with other floors, people are leaning over to see down on him. So that was a very visually quite smart because it kind of showed like the kind of excitement people want to go see him. Yeah. But I, I was, <laughs> I wasn't a fan of the music and exactly. Okay, the music itself wasn't bad. <laughs> I would describe the music as some sort of like epic trailer music. Yeah. I think da, da, that, that da, was the whole da, point da, of the broadcast. I think. I, 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 I mean, yeah. I, go on, go on. I'll, I'll okay, go yeah. I think. I think that was the whole point of the broadcast because I. I mean, I. I am not sure what they were trying to convey because obviously I'm not inside the party right now. But but like but like I think I think it was supposed to be like a trailer of like what the Labour Party would do. So I think, I think the fact that you're describing it as, um, as um, epic trailer music, I think that was the whole point of the forecast. I'm not 100% guess, but, <laughs> Like for me though, if it was like, it was, there was one point in it where um, Jeremy Corbyn was like, I want to debate Theresa May. And um, <laughs> he, he, kind of, he kind of leans forward a bit and kind of goes, I can't remember what he says, but it's kind of like to summarise it, it goes, Fight me, coward! And then suddenly the music goes really epic, like da 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 da. I mean, not not that music, obviously, but that's kind of how it felt. Like I felt like watching like a 2010 video game trailer for something like, really epic. But the problem was the epicness didn't match you know, the tone Jeremy was speaking. So it, okay, came, it was quite fine. funny. Like I, I mean, that's like it wasn't awful. It was a bad pipe like a broadcast, but. It was just for me. I personally thought it was quite funny because it kind of gave me vibes of watching like a Battlefield Three uh, fan made trailer from like t- <laughs> 2011 or 10 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I, 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 it gave me it gave me some nostalgia, so I fell out. <laughs> but overall, I I did enjoy it though because he states the policies are going to implement, um, and it's quite cl- and it does show kind of an area of excitement because of the way it's kind of filmed the people are around him. Um, I, I personally just wish they picked different music, but yeah, <laughs> overall, 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 yeah. overall, a solid. I'd give it a solid six yeah. out of ten. I know we're, I know we're not actually ranking these uh, yeah. for the broadcast, but that, that's, that's yeah, right. yeah. I do think yeah. I do right. think. Right. I good. mean, if we if we go back to the election campaign, obviously, obviously, it was a really good Labour campaign, but but I do think what contributed to the success of that campaign as well was on the other side how bad the Conservative Party campaign was. <laughs> so oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's Theresa May, yeah, yeah, me. yeah. So 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 even though people give obviously Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party a lot of credit for launching a really good campaign, and it was a really good campaign. I mean, it was like summertime and a lot of people were inspired but i think what also contributed to was to the success of that campaign was that and like why people thought it was so good is because in contrast the conservative campaign was so bad <laughs> it was so bad yeah. it made labor look even better than they were at the time i mean it wasn't enough to get them over the line unfortunately but uh, but but uh, yeah, but what made the Labour Party campaign more successful than it really was was that on the other side, when you compared it to Theresa May's campaign, it was complete awful. Theresa May is not a very good campaigner at all. Like, <laughs> I mean, I do remember one of the big clips that came out of 2017 election was, so what's like, the naughtiest thing you've ever done? And it was, <laughs> like, what was that again? Like, running through a field of wheat? <laughs> yeah, I... Like, if she calls that naughty, I think... At least both of us should be in jail for other things we've done. I can't speak for yourself, but if that's not it, I should be in jail for being a criminal oh mastermind. Oh my god! Yeah, stuff. and um, I, I remember like when that interview first came out, um, people were making memes of that with like, with like, with like all the terrible things she has done in government, <laughs> and, yeah. and that meme, and that meme was so funny because, um, well, obviously it wasn't funny because 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 of all the terrible things she has done but but the meme in itself was really funny because because like they were taking the um the um the interview question and then like when she answered the question they were replacing her answer with like with like all the terrible things that she has done as home secretary and 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 it was quite funny as a meme and and i thought that, mm. was, that was hilarious like like there was I feel like I feel like memes could be its own episode. Actually, I feel like that we could do so many memes uh, on memes, that. Memes are like my life. <laughs> yes, I I can confirm that is true. Kira's <laughs> lives are just memes and Pokemon Go. Well, um, and and and, um, 
and Taekwondo. I will, I will actually link my friend code in the description so people can add me. <laughs> oh my god, are you fucking? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, anyway. I will, I will invite people to raid if they haven't got the Deoxys yet because today is the last day of the Deoxys. So actually, I don't know if this when this I will be. Genuinely, on. <laughs> I genuinely don't think anyone listening is going to be much into Pokemon Go. But well, you know, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Can I can I talk about my yeah yeah of course favorite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of of course. I love this one. Um, it's not really okay. So I'll, I'll describe it first. So, the SMP Party Poker Broadcast. It was done. I think it was done for 2019, maybe. If not, it was the one they kind of made. I think. I think it was 2019 though. Um, and basically, uh, it begins with uh, I, I can't remember if it's a car and like an open part of the Highlands is driving through a snowy field or if it's uh, like a kid walking through a forest but basically it's a montage it's a montage of stuff of people just talking about who they are so like it's like one photographer saying I'm a student I'm awesome um it's one NHS woman saying I moved to the Highlands in NHS and I've lived here ever since I don't regret it I thought another young woman just talking about her social group it's all you know it's just people just talking about who they are and then over time, it starts talking about how oh yeah, I I had my uh, I I had my I was broken hearted after the broken promises of twenty fourteen referendum, um, you know Brexit is kind of scary, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now that may sound kind of boring, but the way it's done is if it begins with this really light synth keyboard basically at the beginning it goes do, uh, but you know obviously I'm better tune than my body voice, but um. <laughs> And and the way the way the the whole thing is shot is really professional, um, and basically when it, it hits a point where the music kind of hits a peak, and it goes young people, young people, like really good quality commissioned music. I was commissioned because I looked, I tried to um, app it. I tried to, I can't remember what the app is called again, but I tried to Shazam. That's it. I tried to Shazam it to try and figure out. Who, uh, you know, who did the song? It was completely commissioned. The SMP paid for all of it, and I actually reached out to SMP officials saying, "Hey, can I get an EP for that song? It's a really good song, and uh, none of them could give it to me. So I'm still really annoyed with that. So I want to do it without anyone sitting over it." See, see, I, I and it's have really never... emotional. See, see, yeah, I, I haven't seen this broadcast because this is just one that you just uh, that we haven't um, uh, that we haven't uh, that we didn't plan to talk about. So I haven't seen this broadcast. So you're gonna have to explain it in a lot more detail. I'm, pr- I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I sent it to. You. I'm Did pretty you? sure it was. I sent you four. I sent what the first one. Obviously, the ones we talked about. The last one was that one. Change must come, and that's actually how. Oh, it, oh, oh, sh- ends. oh, oh. Okay, change must come. Okay, now I remember it. Yeah. Okay, fine. So at the end of it, the camera zooming in all their faces. And says change must come. Yes. Change must come. Change must come. Okay. And then there's the pans out over like a lock basically as like vote SMP or, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is on my head. But basically, what I love about that advert uh, public broadcast is it's not one that's really policy focused. And I think yeah. at, at this rate, the SMP can maybe get away with that. Because they've been going for so long, people kind of generally recognise what they stand for. Yeah. But it was very, very good at pull, pulling emotional strings. Like that advert for me was the uh, other advert for you for uh, who who was again Emily, not Emily Sandy, um, Lily Allen. Yeah. They're kind of inspiring you. That was what it felt for me. Yeah. <laughs> I will it really say something captures about it, the feeling. Okay. I will say something about it. I don't think change must come is a is a slogan that works when you've been in government for so long <laughs> even yeah i think I, yeah <laughs> that is I think I, for I, that I, advert for that advert i think it was more aimed i was i'm trying i need to go back over it again uh well there's a link in the description but basically that advert was more aimed at independence with itself yeah, that was kind yeah. of the, the general talking points and that in itself is what the SM could always say about change yeah which they can't but the control. problem with that though but this wasn't that was not that that wasn't released during an independence campaign so so the Let me fact look up very quickly just now keep yeah. going keep going keep going yeah um um i do remember the podcast now but uh the podcast the broadcast now because uh because i recognize the worst change must come um yeah it just doesn't work when you've been in government for so <sighs> long and 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 also i think it would have worked 
a lot better had they released it during an independence referendum campaign because it just doesn't work when you've been in government for so long. Okay, this one only came out five months ago, so it was actually after the 2019 general election. So it works in the context that it's talking about independence. Yeah, and but, obviously, and but at the time of its release. But it wasn't released during an independent campaign, though, so it doesn't work. Well, no, but I, I think the thinking really is, is well, right now, obviously, we're not getting a referendum because <laughs> Boris isn't going to give it to us, but I think it's about building pressure because in the last year, 2020 has been the, the one year, I think in history, actually, where independence has now consistently pulled the majority against oh, right. every poll. And I think that advert in context is really important because it captures the emotion of where we're heading in and towards Sc Scottish independence. Um, so in co so if that was a 2019 uh, referendum advert, well, referendum a uh, campaign advert, I would understand why it would have limitations. But in the context of it was at least post uh, during an election, at a time where the independence topic is getting much hotter because obviously it's becoming far more frequent in political discussion. I think it I think it works because it's very much an emotional appeal. And even though the wider de debate on it needs to have more than emotional appeal, that hit that hit me, right? Yeah. I think it was partially aimed at not just SMP voters, but also independent supporters. Yeah. And I think that's why it's really effective. Yeah. That's my I I guess what I'm trying to say is, dear SMP. <laughs> Please release the EP so I can unload it <laughs> and like let it hold it in my I, heart forever. I mean, like you're the kindest, a... greatest supporter who never criticizes you, Cameron. Arthur. <laughs> well, well, you're well, you're an SNP member. You, you you probably know a lot, a lot of the people high up in the SNP. Like, can't you just like request it or something? I, I have. Like, a few of them just can't get their hands on it. That's it. They just can't get their hands yeah. on it. Uh, so I think come to the next party conference, I'm gonna march right in there, kick down the fucking door, be like, yeah. "Yo, one of you uh, fuckers, like, one of you fuckers, <laughs> give me this EP or shit is gonna go down." And by shit, I just puff <laughs> and just cry yeah, the fact that yeah. I can't get this EP. I don't, I don't think, think I'm looking right forward. Uh, extended play, yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think I'm looking forward to the next Labour Party conference because because of the state of the Labour Party right now. Like, like um of it. Obviously, uh, I really looked forward to party conferences like when like when Corbyn was leader. But like, but 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 now that era is kind of over, and now we have Keir Starmer and his and his like soft left um, uh, MPs kind of like dragging the Labour Party more to the centre, and it's 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 not great. I mean, I mean, I mean, like yesterday I tweeted a joke about about how um about how a um, a ice cream company did a better job of them um, of them um, of them um, of, um, oh, yeah. holding oh, Jerry's. yeah 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 i mean and i tweeted that joke about how an ice cream company are doing a better job at holding the conservative government to account on refugees than the actual leader of the opposition <laughs> and and i don't think he's tweeted once uh, once about solidarity with the refugees coming over and like and like and um and actually, I mean, he's, he's a curious Thomas is a player, right? Let's be fair. <laughs> I mean, yes, pr pretty much. And and, and yeah, it, it really annoyed me that he hasn't actually tweeted once in solidarity with the refugees. And 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 the Socialist Campaign Group, which is basically the group of Labour MPs who are who are on the left. I don't know if you're aware of it, having never been having never been a Labour member, v but. I've never been a Labour member. Yeah, this yeah. Is a, I've, <laughs> just to confirm, I have never been a Labour member. Okay. Yes, listeners, do not cancel me, please. This is just a question, okay? <laughs> Kieran, what the fuck are you doing? Stop it. Uh, uh, but, yeah, yeah and I do know the group you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but basically they released a statement in solidarity with all the refugees. Obviously, if you're if you're not aware of the situation, because the weather has been because the weather has been a lot nicer, it's been a lot easier for refugees to cross over from Calais to uh, was it to the UK. So there ha have been more refugees coming, and um, and obviously that they they have got so much they have faced so much hostility from like people like Nigel Farage, especially God I can't stand him, but but they but they have faced so much so much hostility. 
like crossing the channel from France to England. And then, and, and obviously the socialist campaign group, which is filled with all the left Labour MPs, so not that many anymore, unfortunately, but like, like they released a statement in solidarity and a lot of the left Labour MPs signed that. But I don't think Keir Starmer, as we're recording this, he might have posted it and, and later on before this episode is up. But as, as we are recording this, he hasn't tweeted one, solidar- one ounce of solidarity with the refugees. And it's like, what are you doing, mate? Like, you're supposed to be a leader of the yeah. opposition. And, and also what really annoyed me as well, I mean, sorry for, going off, sorry for going off on a tangent, but what really annoyed me as well is that Pretty Patel tweeted that awful thread that that awful thread about condemning the people coming over here. It's like, they're fleeing such war-torn situations that we could only imagine, and they're facing so, and there's so much hostility from the British public. I just don't understand it. Okay, that's kind of run over. <laughs> no, uh, uh, yeah, I think that was a pretty solid run. I mean, yeah. nothing to do with pipeline broadcast but you know what yeah i i dig this uh we can absolutely dunk at all everyone uh apart from the greens and the smp because we're, <clears throat> we're pro refugee um you know anyway not not to rub it in your face but um yeah i mean, no, I I mean think... haven't haven't i mean i don't think scotland have have them um, have them um, have a policy control over how many refugees they actually intake i think they have to rely on uk policy I'm yeah, not, it, yeah. It's, it is uk policy but we have to take in a disproportionate in a good way by the way good way disproportionate amount of refugees because we've taken more than our share population which is good though because you know the way i envision uh you know, after independence, the way I envision it is we just open our doors, go, hey, everyone come in, it's a party, let's get this uh, <laughs> culture pop mixing, you know, because, yeah. you know, that's, that's how I envision it anyway, or, you know, if, you know, seeing the video of, of uh, these refugees coming on these boats, if they hit a boat, like, uh, uh, Brody Ferris, you know, beach in Brody Ferris, something like that, I can imagine, like, a guy is, like, buck fa- like a packet of buck fast, just kind of going, hey, welcome, join the party, make your home here, we will sort you out, woo Yeah, yeah. That or, you know, and I say that as if, like, it's a uniquely Scottish thing, but I think deep down progressives from across all the UK, that's how they want to envision jokingly but also in a more serious note that's how they want to have the energy of welcoming uh, refugees with yeah. energy and excitement to say this is your new home welcome yeah and um and and also and also i do think britain do have a moral responsibility of taking a, a far more refugees than we do i i think it's actually illegal for refugees to come I'm not. I'm not an expert on that part of the law, but I think it's actually illegal for refugees to come into Britain, and and, and I do think that Britain has its has has a moral responsibility to actually take take a proportion of of their fair share of refugees because yeah. I, because because over over the last couple of years, not even the last couple of years, like the last decade, our our domestic policies have been horrendous. Well, well, our our foreign policies have been horrendous. I mean, how many times have we like bombed Syria and like how many, how many? All right. Well, we we are getting into the territory here that's <laughs> very far away from our political broadcast, but we can definitely do this like yeah another time. Not to cut you off. <laughs> Don't want people sitting and going political broadcast. Woo! And then you have to hear about uh, I don't know, completely. Oh, that's not good. I'll, this is a very good topic, but we should probably sort of wrap it up here i guess yeah yeah um, i mean i mean how long have we been talking for you... how long have we been talking for now <laughs> enough enough i think <laughs> and, um, and this has actually been only been one take and we haven't started at all like this is this has been great <laughs> yeah i just want to start doing it now just stuttering but no let's yeah. um i i think is there any final points you want to make on archie oh, question for you like the same as last time if you had to rank uh your top three political broadcasts, putting aside our, our biases, if we had to rank the top three political broadcasts we sent each other, what would they be? Okay, um, okay, that we sent each other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so to, uh, put, put aside our political <laughs> biases, you know? Okay, okay. I love um, the SMB, love Labour, but what would uh, you say in terms of like, not just like your favourite, but like, what was, a, what was an effective party political broadcast though? Well, um, Okay. Okay. Well, my favorite political broadcast of all time is Green 2015. So, like, putting that. Aside, no, 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 no. 
I'm yeah. talking about the one yeah, you said yeah, together. Yeah. Although if we are talking yeah. about the one, that would be my yeah. number one as well. Yeah, yeah. But so um, do that for like another episode though. Yeah, so um so so putting aside that I I am um, I do think two thousand and eleven SMP was quite good, but obviously it's kind of tainted now with salmon. But 2011 SMP was quite good. Uh, 2017 uh, Corbin was uh, was was probably second. Uh, and I guess one more that deserves a spot on the list is I don't know Emily Sanday one because I thought yeah Emily Sanday is that third or first uh, that third one. third yeah third okay okay right your so, turn to rank I mean if if, if, you, if you don't like Alex Salmon, just replace that one with the 2016 <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon one. It's the same thing, basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm going to t- say in terms of... Okay, I'm going to be... Yeah, in terms of an effective broadcast, I would say the 2016 Nicola Sturgeon one. Uh, that was, for me, definitely most effective because it was using a pop culture reference, listed out manifestos, and even though it didn't explicitly state what they're doing next year uh, or in government, it did kind of hit enough of what they stand for generally. Second one, um, hmm, a tough here, actually, I'm trying to think. Um, probably the Emily Sandy one as well, because I I think that had a very good balance of visually showing what Libra stands for, but also having a good emotional appeal. It was a very, very good balance. I, I actually really appreciate I'm not a Libra support but i really appreciate that advert and for a third one i'm gonna go with um probably the, the smp one because it said the, the change was come one but it's set in a different context um away from general elections but in the context it's set in i think it's very effective and a very good emotional appeal but it's third though because it's heavily reliant on emotional appeal and less so about describing policy basically yeah but um but i will i will give bonus credit though to the emily sandy one because I, I was watching i was like i did i did i did. i also can't see me i'm holding my chest right now with like mm, yeah girl yeah I love yeah mm, yeah mm, yeah woohoo that's me basically showing my appreciation for the emily sandy advert but yeah no um that's my top three but i think um next time we talk unless we're not doing that we're going to talk about um wider party political broadcasts or what to just consider yeah, older yeah. ones from like the 80s and 90s yeah uh, which will be fun because some of them are great some of them <laughs> <coughs> tory ones are massively homophobic um, <laughs> should be fantastic uh, and then we're going to discuss more other ones outside labor and the smp uh, the green one we hit that the green ones uh fantastic but we won't discuss that just now we'll leave that for next so, time Kieran. so i so goodbye everyone i hope everyone is doing well i forgot to say this at the beginning actually i hope everyone is doing well especially in the bloody heat wave like in in england it's gone up to like 30 degrees in during the day and like i cameron over in like winty scotland is making fun uh, of me what what heat wave we're just enjoying the nice cool uh, sun i say that though because right now it's gray sky where i am but what heat wave are you talking about i, I am so really talking about. <laughs> because obviously in the south in the south of england like it's gotten it's gotten up like 30 degrees like during the day and obviously in scotland it's like what's the temperature right now in scotland oh <laughs> maybe 19 degrees here yeah, again i yes. think probably 60 i'm going you know what let's look at this up right now uh yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, so Sterling. so obviously I've been complaining about the weather every day, and Cameron's been like, "What heat waves? What? I don't see any heat waves." <laughs> I was close. It was eighteen degrees. So yeah, okay. no, I'm just chill. I'm just yeah. chilling while you're like, like melting. Like oh. my melting. I'm Mel- melting. I, I am melting. But anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. If you're watching this on YouTube, but well, well, you can't see our faces, but I hope you are. Well. You can still wish them well if they're watching it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, for those listening, uh, we don't wish you well. Screw you. Please don't watch our podcast. We love you. Please do watch our podcast. We, we, we want this to be successful. Okay, okay so bye. Ending credits now. <laughs>